Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Today we're going to go over our normal schedule in a more detailed technical analysis on TradingView in just a second. Other than that, make sure to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. And go ahead and take a look at my premium content if you're interested in monthly cryptocurrency buying opportunities as well as five high return cryptocurrencies. I'll have a link to both of those in the description of my video. And with that being said, let's jump right over the general market update. So what's going on is we're still struggling to move higher and that's normal, right? That is expected considering that we're still in our symmetrical triangle formation for Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies are also in some kind of consolidation phase. So as you can see, until we break out of the downtrend and we exit this formation, we're probably going to struggle to move higher. Now, with that being said, we are bouncing off that $9,000 level, but I'll go over all of this uh, once we start the technical analysis side of things. Just to go over the general market, some cryptocurrencies doing better than others. NEM is able to push a bit higher, VeChain as well. And the big mover today is actually Binance Coin after receiving some positive news. As you can see, it's up 25% over the past 24 hours, moving back towards that $1 billion market cap area. And if we take a look, the CEO of Binance said that uh, he tweeted that Binance was growing too quickly and too busy to start anything else. So all they could do is to start one more Binance. And what he meant by that is that they are now officially, you know, working on the development and launch of Binance Chain. Now, Binance Chain is the decentralized exchange of Binance. And while this probably won't make any effects, you know, on everything in the short term, on a longer term period, this is very key, right? Because decentralized exchanges um, are really the future of cryptocurrency and where cryptocurrencies should be, right? There's a lot of problems with centralized exchanges. The only problem is that uh, decentralized exchanges are not where they, they should be for true, you know, adoption right now. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why Binance Coin uh, did spike up is, you know, just the anticipation that People are very happy with Binance. Uh, they've been very good in the crypto community. They've, they have, of course, a great platform. And the idea that Binance is going to be taking on, you know, the, the launch and development of a decentralized exchange that will hopefully be on par with uh, what we currently see and expect from Binance is, you know, very promising. And, of course, if they do actually fulfill uh, the development of, of, you know, successfully of Binance chain, well, they can kind of combine their centralized exchange and the decentralized exchange and, and really create a true powerhouse. Uh, and like they mentioned here, they're going to be working on the development and everything. So like I said, probably not going to see that much in the short term. But once things start to really come to fruition, it's going to be, you know, potentially very major. And, and people are definitely looking forward to that, as we can see uh, by the spike of Binance Coin itself. So let's jump right over to the technical analysis, starting off with Bitcoin. And as you can see, we bounce off that $9,000 support level. We're now pushing a little bit higher. We do have our resistance at $10,000. And of course, our downtrend line also putting some pressure on the price. I'm going to go ahead and draw in our short term downtrend line because that is, you know, one of the things to pay attention to here. See if we maybe can move, make a move to the upside a little bit earlier than expected. And I'll go ahead and pull in our downtrend line here. As you can see, we'll, we'll pretty quickly know if we're going to be able to start pushing back towards $10,000 in the short term or if we're going to dip below $9,000. Either way, I expect consolidation between those two levels. And, and once we reach the downtrend line, we'll see if we're able to pop out of that a little bit earlier than expected or if we're going to fall a little bit lower and, you know, find support at $8,000, reach the end of our symmetrical triangle formation and then break either to the upside or downside, which will set the trend for Bitcoin and most likely uh other cryptocurrencies that are out there. Now we did break out of the downtrend on the RSI, so that is one positive sign. Otherwise, not that much happening for now on the indicators. Let's go over to Ethereum and see what Ethereum has been up to. Now Ethereum is right above its $695 support level. It's currently pushing back towards $700. We've got a nice little hook back over on the MACD. Still no crossovers yet. Same thing on the um, histogram. Now, what we can expect for Ethereum here over the next few days is probably a move a little bit higher. I, I feel like that's pretty likely. 
uh, seeing that we're experiencing a slight bounce and I'm just not sure if we're going to be able to get back above $764 and our downtrend line just yet, right? If Bitcoin ends up moving, uh, you know, significantly higher here over the next few days, then it is a possibility. But with a good chance of Bitcoin moving back towards $8,000 to reach the end of its metrical triangle formation, I feel like we might, you know, reject the downtrend line and push a little bit lower here, maybe moving back towards $600 for Ethereum as well over the next two weeks. Now let's go over to Litecoin, see what Litecoin has been up to. And it looks like Litecoin is uh, pushing on top of its downtrend line. Indicator is still pretty flat. We'll see if we're able to, to you know, move back towards $218. That would obviously be a very good sign. And then if we could consolidate at those higher levels, once again, that is ideal. I feel like we are gonna probably, you know, start moving out of the downtrend line but I'm not sure if we're gonna get any kind of huge spike, right? I think we might uh, consolidate in this lower area, maybe bounce a little bit off that $165 mark if th things move a little bit lower, but overall I expect Litecoin to remain pretty flat, no major drops or major moves towards the upside. Let's go over towards Nano now, and we're gonna see what Nano has been doing. So we reached that 120,000 Satoshi level again. We're now moving back towards 114,000 Satoshis we can maybe get a bounce off our previous downtrend line here as well. I think that uh, there is a chance if Bitcoin falls lower that Nano will come back to 100,000 Satoshis. For now though, we're still in our consolidation between 114,000 Satoshis and our downtrend line. I expect that to continue uh, further and there is always a possibility that we drop below 140,000 Satoshis, start moving lower, but there's also a very high chance that we uh, end up consolidating you know, and really reaching the end of the formation and testing the breakout out of the downtrend over here. Now let's jump over to Ripple. We're going to take a look at what Ripple has been doing. Let's go over to Bitrix here. And Ripple has uh, been consolidating in this very tight range, right under 84 cents. As for the indicators, still very flat, not giving us much information. The consolidation at this point is probably going to continue, especially with the middle band coming back towards that 84 cent mark. I think that we're likely just going to see some consolidation between 65 cents and 84 cents. Let's jump over to NEO and see if NEO has been regaining some strength. So for NEO, we are right below that $85 mark. That was, of course, a very important support level that is now acting as resistance. We also have some downside pressure from our longer term downtrend line over here. Indicators, you know, slightly moving towards the upside. We see the MACD that's starting to flatten out as well. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get back above $85 just yet. That would be a very good move and would likely put us in some consolidation between $85 and $100. But until we break out of our red downtrend line over here, we can't really you know, make any calls for that because it is uh, putting and will probably continue to put a lot of downward pressure on the price, which could push us you know, at least towards $75, let's say. And we do have some resistance there, so we'll have to watch for a bounce at that area. And I'll go ahead and put in a horizontal support level there, just so you, you get an idea of where that is located on the chart. So not that far from where we are, which makes sense. You know, we can see some consolidation between $75 and $85 over the next week or so. Now let's jump over to Stellar, see what Stellar has been doing. I actually managed to hold up pretty well since it had a drop before the rest of the market. So it, it did manage to get a bounce. And right now, basically confirming what I said, uh, indicators are uptrending, which is good slight uptrend and the price is consolidating in this very tight range between 3,000 Satoshis and 3,500 Satoshis. We also see the Bollinger Bands coming in that range and the middle band that's flattening out right now. So that does uh, you know, further indicate that we're gonna see more consolidation uh, in this range, which is good considering that some of these cryptocurrencies are kind of at the brink of dropping lower. Stellar seems like it has a good chance of holding up here uh, at least for the short term, based on what's going on. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Vertcoin. Definitely fell a bit uh, after doing pretty good in the first time since, you know, the downtrend. And we're now consolidating in this area near $263. No major support uh, right here, but at least we managed to, you know, hold up based on this candlestick, I'd say, and this one right over here. Now, we are moving a little bit higher. We'll probably get a test of the downtrend line, see if we can maybe break out of that, go back for $3.23. But now, once again, we have a lot of uh, pressure towards the downside and a lot of resistance levels to get above before, you know, being in a more bullish 
territory. So it's not going to be easy, not impossible, but right now we're in this downtrending channel between our two downtrend lines right here. And I'd say we're likely to continue in that channel until we break out of the downtrend line. At that point, we're probably going to see some consolidation and the price start to flatten out which will leave also more time for the Bollinger Bands to flatten out, I should point out. And let's go ahead and take a look at LISC, see if LISC has been able to bounce. Now, LISC has been uh, consolidating a little higher, above $12, currently sitting at $14. We're about to get a crossover on the MACD and Histogram, which could be very significant. Keep in mind that it is the first time that we'll get a test out of uh, the bearish you know, trend on those indicators. And usually, the first time around, there's a pretty high chance that we fail it. So as you can see here, very similar formation. Uh, on our first attempt, we actually failed that and moved a bit lower. There is a chance of that happening again. And in this situation, it could potentially push us to $10 or maybe even a little bit below that near $8, which would not be the best thing, but it will, would really flush things out to allow the price to move higher. But if we do get a positive crossover, the price is likely to move back up towards that $20 mark pretty quickly. For now, though, still pretty flat between $12 and $17.46. And I would say I would base a lot of my, you know, expectations on the indicators right now. So those will probably be the first signs to tell us what's going to happen next, next for LISC. And we're now going to jump over to Cardano. Cardano has been in a bit of a weird situation, and it's actually turning uh, better and better here day by day. We have a slight uptrend next, that's beginning, and we're currently attempting right now to break out of our downtrend, this longer-term downtrend that set this whole decline actually and that three thousand dollar satoshi level which is actually very critical now we have a nice u-shaped bounce on the rsi we just broke above thirty dollars slight uptrend as well on the macd and histogram and we'll have to see but good chance that we i mean based on the indicators you know definitely a fair chance that we do break out of the downtrend and that would allow for, for some consolidation between two thousand five hundred satoshis and three thousand satoshis I don't really expect a major jump just because, you know, it's it's just the beginning of a potential exit of the downtrend, so you can't expect anything too crazy to happen. But just some consolidation in between 2,500 and 3,000 Satoshis would be much better than the decline that we've been in for a while now. And let's go over IOTA finally, last cryptocurrency of the daily crypto update. IOTA has been consolidating between $1.13 and $1.47. We do have the Bollinger Bands expanding a bit, which could lead uh, space for a bigger move here. A lot of space towards the upside, actually. Now, we have to make sure that IOTA and the rest of the market you know, work well together for that to happen, which we can't really count on right now. But what's for sure is we're probably going to see a bit more consolidation between $1.13 and $1.47 until we break out of either of those you know, levels, we can't really make any calls on what's gonna happen next, right? We really have to see if we're gonna break above $1.47, which would be bullish, of course, and would put us in this higher range, or if we're gonna start moving back towards a dollar, even maybe under a dollar, if it were to get that bad. With that being said, this is the end of this daily crypto update. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.